why gene cloning and pcr are so important gene cloning and pcr are relatively straightforward procedures one of its main advantages is obtaining a pure sample of gene by cloning let us see this experiment to understand exactly how cloning can provide a pure sample of gene in this example the dna fragment to be cloned is one member of a mixture of many different fragments each carrying a different gene or part of a gene this mixture could indeed the entire genetic complement of an organism a human for instance each of these fragments becomes inserted into a different vector molecule to produce a family of recombinant dna molecules one of which carries the gene of interest usually only one recombinant dna molecule is transported into any single host cell so that although the final set of colonies may contain many different recombinant dna molecules each individual colonies contains multiple copies of just one molecule the gene is now separated away from all other genes in the original mixture and its specific features can be studied in detail the next important concept is the purification of gene using pcr the polymerase chain reaction can also be used to obtain a pure sample of a gene this is because the region of the starting dna molecule that is copied during pcr is the segment whose boundaries are marked by the annealing positions of the two oligonucleotide primers if the primers anneal either side of the gene of interest many copies of the gene will be synthesized the outcome is the same as with the gene cloning experiment although the problem of selection does not arise because the desired gene is automatically selected as a result of the positions at which the primers anneal a pcr experiment can be completed in a few hours whereas it takes weeks if not months to obtain a gene by cloning why then is gene cloning still used it is because pcr has two limitations in order for the primers to anneal to the correct positions either side of the gene of interest the sequence of these annealing sites must be known it is easy to synthesize a primer with a predetermined sequence but if the sequence of the annealing sites are unknown then the appropriate primers cannot be made this means the pcr cannot be used to isolate genes that have not been studied before that has to be done by cloning the second limit is the limit to the length of dna sequence that can be copied by the pcr 5 kilo bases can be copied fairly easily and segments up to 40 kb can be dealt with by using specialized techniques but this is shorter than the length of many genes especially those of humans and other vertebrates cloning must be used if an intact version of a gene is required gene cloning is therefore the only way of isolating long genes or those that have never been studied before but the pcr still has many important applications for example even if the sequence of gene is not known it may still be possible to determine the appropriate sequence for a pair of primers based on what is known about the sequence of the equivalent gene in a different organism a gene that has been isolated and sequenced from say mouse could therefore be used to design a pair of primers for isolation of the equivalent gene from humans in addition there are many applications where it is necessary to isolate or detect genes those sequences are already known a pcr of human globin genes for example is used to test for the presence of mutations that might cause the blood disease called thalassemia Design of appropriate primers for this PCR is easy because the sequence of the human globin genes are known. After the PCR, the gene copies are sequenced or studied in some way to determine if any of the thalassemia mutations are present. Another clinical applications of PCR involves the use of primers specific for the DNA of a disease causing virus. A positive results indicate that a sample contains the virus and that the person who provided the sample should undergo treatment to prevent onset of the disease. The PCR is tremendously sensitive 
A carefully set up reaction yields detectable amounts of DNA, even if there is just one DNA molecule in the starting mixture. This means that the technique can detect viruses at the earliest stages of an infection, increasing the chances of treatment being successful.